Uh, this is Dr. Kasorg with another episode of Cadet Chronicles, and I'm here today with Assistant Superintendent Kristen Pellini. We're going to talk a little bit about computer-based testing. So, Kristen, can you tell us a little bit about the change? Uh, we're used to taking the test or the assessment on paper. Um, what's going to be happening? What will students experience and what should parents know? Of course. So these are the same New York State grades three through eight tests that we've been taking in ELA science and math for a number of years. The state began its transition to computer-based testing in 2017. And at the time it was optional for districts to choose to test on paper or to test uh, computer-based. That has changed with a memo that was released last year from state ed and this coming spring, uh, in just a few more weeks, grades five and eight are mandated to take tests in computer-based format. So as a district, we made the decision to move all of our three through eight testing to computer-based format so that we weren't testing some grades on paper and some grades on the computer and really using two systems to kind of tax the resources staff and potentially be confusing to staff, uh, students and their families. So we'll begin those tests uh, in early April. Um, those dates have been shared by principals and uh, it should be an, an interesting endeavor. Uh, experience computer-based testing in former roles and working with colleagues and it's really a pretty seamless transition, especially now that our students are accustomed to taking assessments online, like the NWEA or taking assessments in EDOC Trina. So um, I think primarily just to know that it's happening, that they're the same test, but just in a different format this year is really uh, what we need to share with everybody. All right, and now working closely with you and having discussions, I know that uh, the district under your leadership and the leadership of some other administrators have taken a lot of time to yes. work out the kinks. So I know that sometimes people can be concerned with connectivity, uh, what devices I can take the assessment on. Uh, is there anything that you could share with me or uh, the community that will help ease maybe some concerns about that? There's been a great deal of work that's been happening for over a year and a half um, at this point. We started last, uh, probably February, uh, really getting into the weeds with the plans. Tracy Zabato and Christy Schaefer, two of our directors here, have really taken the lead with the nuts and bolts and the details around computer-based testing. So we started messaging in the fall of 22 that we would transition to computer-based testing, gave some resources to teachers, but it was still a bit of a ways away. Uh, some of the things that we've done in preparation include giving all of our field tests last spring in 23 in the computer-based format. So that allowed us to come in and just observe and see how students reacted with the field test, how staff and how the infrastructure reacted as well. After that field test experience, Christy, Tracy and I started meeting on a monthly basis to really plan professional development for teachers and so the rollout and the training they need for proctoring, resources for students, and then also building all the systems and structures that our clerical staff needed to engage with um, as well as our, as our administrators. In February, we administered the uh, simulation. So all of our students in grades three through eight had a chance to do about a 20 minute simulation in a math assessment. And that allowed us to test our systems and to see how they were working. Um, Christy and her team, the technology team, have uh, individuals assigned to each of the buildings during the testing period. They have a plethora of Chromebooks that can be used in a hot swap if necessary. They're coming with extra chargers and we're using a command central model where teachers can simply um, reach out to one number at Command Central and then we can dispatch needs to their classroom whether it's my student has a Chromebook that's not charged and we can have someone bring that down or it's the students having trouble logging in and we can work on that assistance as well. So that system's kind of built in, we got to test it during simulation and then went back and, and tweaks a few things here and there but I feel like with the proctor training that's been going on the last couple weeks people are feeling more ready as it approaches. Well that's great. I want to thank you and thank everybody for all of their efforts efforts as we uh, make this move. Now, a while back, there was uh, unfortunately some politics involved with the assessment, and there was a movement for parents to refuse their child taking the test. And, and ultimately, for uh, the people that made that decision, often it was because results were linked to uh, APPR or the teacher evaluation system. Uh, now that has been totally decoupled. So it has nothing to do, the, the assessment now is not linked to any evaluation of teachers. So I think it's important just to let the community know that that change has happened because I think everybody, uh, not everybody, but many people got on board to support the fact that that should be uncoupled. And now it is. So we certainly encourage 
students to take the assessment now. Absolutely. So um, could you just, in, in, in a few words, let us know um, why it's important for our students to take this assessment? Uh, there's a couple different reasons that are as granular as the student level. So we're able to, through reports that are released um, to administration, able to analyze student performance. We can get down as specific as um, this particular student is doing very well on this set of standards, but might be struggling on this set of standards. So we have a lot more information about student performance on the individual level. We also use those assessments to evaluate our programs. So for instance, if we notice that we're particularly strong in a certain grade level um, in math, let's say, we might look to replicate some of the strengths in the standards where we're performing well to see how that vertical alignment happens in our curriculum moving forward. So it gives us a really good overview of how our programs are performing in general, and we can start to see areas where we might have some opportunity for improvement or some areas that are really successful. We can dig into that a little bit more, but we receive a lot more from uh, these assessments, right down to the item analysis, how it aligns to the standards, how we're doing um, as a district, how we're doing against uh, New York State averages. So it allows us to make a lot of changes and um, in celebrations of our instructional program as well. So there's that, the down to the individual student value of the assessment, um, as well as that programmatic view. Oh, great. Uh, is there anything I didn't ask you about computer-based testing or transition over to it or assessment in general that you like to share uh, with our viewers today? I think as we think about computer-based testing, it's important for us to remember that we have systems in place and to rely on those systems. Um, one of the most important things that our students and families can do is make sure their Chromebooks are charged the night before the assessment, so making sure those are plugged in and ready to go. Um, I think as much as students can practice and teachers can offer those opportunities, that's really helpful. The reality is that even as much as we can use all the data that comes from that state test, we recognize that as one data point, it's one assessment in our assessment cycles that we use through formative assessments. It might be as small as daily check-ins for understanding um, to quizzes and tests and projects. Um, and that students really can be assessed in a variety of ways. This is one measure of many that we take to help inform our instruction moving forward and make sure that students are growing at the trajectory that we anticipate. Great, uh, great information, thank you so much. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Kristen Pelini, our Assistant Superintendent for Instruction, for sharing some additional information about this change and the importance of assessment. Uh, thank you very much. This concludes another episode of Cadet Chronicles. Have a great day.